Hi everybody, welcome back and thank you for joining me for another video. So this video, as promised, Bad Harry. There is nothing to do with any up-to-date news stories. This does not cover any of the other royals. This is purely just about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's relationship from when it first started. I have a lot of people that have been with this channel since the very beginning and obviously I spent a lot of time just talking about Meghan and Harry and now I prefer to spend my time talking about the real royals and we pepper them in, don't we, towards the end. They're the punchline at the end of every video really. But this video, there was an article that came out and I went down a rabbit hole with it and I thought there's so many new subscribers from when I first started. You might like to see some of the original stuff that came out about Meghan and Harry and it might help you get a bigger backstory as to why so many people were suspicious of Meghan's intentions from the very beginning. Now what story started this off was a beautiful stunning bride in an incredibly lovely bridal dress. The hair, the flowers, the dress, this is an absolutely beautiful look. Now the bride and groom in the picture are Isabella Clark and Jack Mann. Jack Mann is a long-term friend of Prince Harry and he was one of the select few that were allowed to attend the evening reception of his wedding to Meghan. Now the reason why Harry and Meghan got brought up when this article came out is because they weren't there and I can't even imagine given their treatment of other people that they would have even been invited. Plus the fact Meghan has got a track record of trying to upstage brides on their wedding days. So let's start with George Woodhouse, whose wedding was to Harry and Prince William's cousin, Celia. Meghan wore a three and a half thousand pound Oscar de la Renta dress. It was huge. It was like she got a freebie off of someone. It completely swamped her. It looked like curtains. Her makeup wasn't done and we know that Meghan can dress up and look incredibly beautiful when she wants to. Her hair was a mess like she hadn't even brushed it and she had a clashing fascinator on her head. It looked like toilet paper. This is how the dress should look on the catwalk. So you can see overall it was an incredibly untidy and messy look and obviously it then guaranteed that Meghan appeared in all of the magazines because she's wearing this huge couture designer dress. Wedding number two, Charlie Van Straubenzee and Daisy Jenks. Beautiful outfit. Megan, as I said, she can absolutely, when she wants to, look incredibly beautiful. I love this outfit. Her hair looked nice, the hat looked nice. She looked really, really pretty. However, when she arrived at the church and she was so busy performing for the cameras and pulling faces for the paparazzi who were there as well, it wasn't just a society wedding photographer. They had paps there. Chances are, dial a pap. What does Megan do? Well, Megan just magically happens to have her blouse undone and is flashing her black lacy bra. So what did we hear about Charlie Van Strausenby's wedding to Daisy Jenks? Oh, we had pictures of Megan's right breast everywhere over all of the media outlets. And you can just tell by her reaction, she's like, oops, really? How did that happen? So you know that, well, I say, my guess is it was intentional. Then let's get on to the third wedding, which is very well publicised, which was Princess Eugenie's wedding to Jack Brooksbank. We all know what happened. Eugenie was wearing the tiara crown, the emerald tiara that Meghan wanted to wear on her wedding day. Don't fall for the rumours that Meghan was asking to wear the Vladimir tiara because it's huge. It wouldn't have even been offered to Meghan as a viable option for a tiara on her wedding day. Meghan wanted this and it was earmarked by Princess Eugenie for her wedding day. On top of this, Eugenie and Jack got engaged before Harry and Meghan and they had also booked the same church to get married in. Because Harry was senior, Meghan and Harry trumped Eugenie and Jack to announce in their engagement. They then trumped them to the same wedding venue. Meghan wore a very similar tiara, obviously without the emeralds on her wedding day. But I think this definitely upset Meghan because she decided, despite being a matter of mere weeks, weeks being pregnant, normal couples would leave it until you are a bit more at a safety stage but she decided to step out that car all coy hand in her hair with her coat opened it was done deliberately they deliberately told family members that she 
she was pregnant. There was no reason to do it. It is taboo. I'm sorry. It's like wearing white to someone's wedding unless the bride has insisted I would like everyone in black and white. So I think that that was a really underhanded, nasty thing to do. You just don't do things like that. Megan tried to defend herself in magazines by saying it's just because all of the family were together. Please, there's such things as email and WhatsApp and handwritten calligraphy letters. Now the big one, now this will take you back to when Harry and Meghan first started dating. This has been a huge red flag of mine because I don't understand why Harry didn't run for the hills at this point. We are talking about Skippy, Tom in Skip's wedding to Lara Hughes in Jamaica. In 2016, rumours were that Harry had dumped Meghan. He'd had his fling and his bunk up in Botswana like he'd done with, I don't know, five or six other girls before Meghan. She still turned up at the wedding by herself. Apparently when they were together, Meghan was invited as Harry's plus one. She came, she borrowed a private jet, she arrived without Harry. They weren't even sitting together in the church. As you can tell, Harry was not very receptive to Meghan. At one point, these photographs were taken and they are so incredibly cringeworthy. You do not need to be a body language expert. Harry does not want to kiss her. The friends in the background are laughing at this. Harry is rigid as a board as Meghan clutches his face, obviously knowing that the paparazzi were there, no doubt dial a pap, to capture this moment. She was trying to reinforce her relationship publicly and she didn't care that she was using someone else's wedding to do so. Harry and Meghan, when they were leaving the ceremony on the way to the reception, you can tell that they were not overly friendly towards each other. Any woman with an inch of dignity would have turned around and said, I'm going home at this point. But then I suppose any woman with a shred of decency wouldn't have actually gone to gate crash someone else's wedding. They're not her friends, they were Harry's friends. Now, as for the bride and groom's friends, you can tell that they weren't particularly happy either. The body language of everyone that was around Meghan, they weren't really chatting into her, this photograph of her standing up at the bar as the bride and groom come past. Now this is where it gets worse. I think that they were stuck at a table at the back because they were obviously there, well Meghan was there, to create drama. Now Meghan starts arguing with Harry. There is no other way that you could describe this sort of behaviour. She's angry, her jaw is clenched, she's talking to him, she's clutching him, she's hanging over him. Harry looks like a rabbit caught in the headlights. When several friends come over, Meghan is all over him. She is clawing at him, hanging on to him. She might as well have copped her leg and marked her territory at one point. Now, whether it was the fact that they were arguing or whether it was the fact that quite clearly I would say that Meghan's done a dial a pap situation to capture her with Harry, although it wasn't going in the way that I'd imagine she intended, she was expecting a warmer reception, one of the bride and groom's friends comes over to diffuse the situation or to express the reason why the bride and groom may not be happy with what is happening. You can see here the change in Meghan's face as the conversation unravels. First of all, Megan starts looking very defensive and she's explaining, and then she starts looking incredibly nasty. Who the hell even looks at another person like this? Absolutely evil is no other way to describe it. This is beyond mean girl. This isn't, you're just pissed off. She looks absolutely savage and ferocious. Who goes to someone's wedding where it's not even your friends for a start? You're a plus one and create drama like this. Harry's friends at the end of the day, these were his friends, were quite clearly not happy and upset. Meghan was behaving absolutely low class. Harry at this point should have told her to leave, but he didn't. He stayed with her. And then the next day he was seen with her when they were, you know, having a beach day together on the beach. Again, the paparazzi are there taking photographs perfectly of Harry and Meghan to be released to magazines. So you can understand why Harry's friends weren't particularly fond of Meghan and this obviously publicity stunt where she was using Harry to get herself into the magazines. So how do Harry and Meghan repay Tom Inskip and his wife Valara when they have their huge royal wedding? They invited them to the day, but they weren't allowed to go to the evening reception. Who does that? You have people come to the day and then people, everyone comes to the evening. Day guests, evening guests. You don't tell the day guests to go home because you've got evening guests. Bear in mind, this isn't like them, they're a, you know, a couple that are trying to save money. They needed to do a low key, cheap wedding to make sure they could fit all of their friends and family in. They could have had as many people as they wanted. They had millions to spend to do so. It was quite clearly a cruel snub. Meghan might've been the one that said she wanted this, 
It was Harry's childhood friend and Harry was the one that allowed this. So straight away, that's the first segment of bad friend. Let's get on to bad grandson. And I know I posted in the community page your thoughts on would you ever forgive Harry? Do you know what the general consensus was of everyone? Harry might have been forgiven if he hadn't have done what he did to his grandparents, if it had just been a falling out with his father and his brother, sibling rivalry or whatever. But the way he treated Prince Philip and the Queen in their final years, absolutely unforgivable. A mere matter of months after the stunt that was pulled at Tom in Skip's wedding, that's when the demands and the pressure on both his grandparents started. He made demands from the very beginning, from the very moment that he met Meghan, that she was to be accepted on his word, demanded protocols be changed that have never been done before for other women that were marrying into the family. He even made demands when she was just his girlfriend, for which the Queen allowed and accepted. He convinced his grandparents to make them full-time working royals and to give them the dukedom of Sussex, all the while they were plotting to leave the royal family. They used a royal tour to South Africa to film the Tom Bradby documentary, taking veiled swipes at Prince William, planting the seeds for the racism and the victim storyline that we would later see play out on Oprah less than 18 months later. The first serious round of attacks where they said that they were neglected, Meghan was, you know, racially abused, her unborn child, you know, the false allegations of racism which Harry has now waited till Philip and the Queen went to their grave with this overhanging them and has since dialed back. They did this all the whilst knowing that Prince Philip was in his final months. I don't care that they put out a statement saying that they would have actually cancelled the Oprah show from airing if Philip had died. He was dying. It shouldn't have been done. The fact that they have continued with their attacks right up until the Queen died and even beyond, despite knowing that she was dying of bone cancer, they were plotting and planning and making more footage, documentaries, books to attack the Queen. They heaped untold amounts of hurt on a 96-year-old grandmother who had recently lost her husband and tried to probably ruin her legacy. All for money. Let's get on to Bad Son. Well, the Bad Son, he has attacked his father in a book, a TV documentary, interviews for being cold and cruel. He had an isolated, loveless childhood. He lied about the neglect he suffered. He wasn't even allowed out on bike rides, all at the hands of his evil, cold father. Thank goodness he had his mum. On top of this, he has also trashed Queen Camilla. He has publicly called her a villain. She left a trail of bodies in her PR trail. She stole stories to the press on Prince William and Harry to make herself look better. These are all incredibly awful allegations. Again, Harry's just saying it happened because, well, he thinks it happened or Meghan told him it happened. Bad brother. Well, you could start with any of the previous stories, the fact that he did that to the same grandparents, the same father. But Harry has also gone on even more of a rampage on his arch nemesis, as he has cruelly referred to Prince William. The two brothers who were once close, Harry has revealed personal intimate details about anything from his brother's anatomy, revealed private conversations at very deeply personal moments. He's criticised his brother's wife, Catherine, live on TV, and even gone as far to say that the children, George, Charlotte and Louis, Harry needs to look out for them because they'll end up like him. That's pretty rich coming from Harry, who has got two children of his own to be concerned about, who don't quite clearly ever see the light of day. Let's get on to bad husbands. Well, if all of the stories are true, and we've been told that they are true, think about back when Meghan was in the royal family. She's being mistreated. She was being neglected. She was being um, refused medical help. I mean, they, they went to a member of HR because Meghan was feeling so low that she wanted to take her own life and no one helped. The family didn't help. I'm sorry, but if my husband came to me and turned around and said, I'm not feeling very well, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling suicidal, I am telling you now that a fleet of F-16, several army tanks, and Tom Cruise himself could not stop me putting my husband in a car and taking him to a doctor, to a hospital, getting on the phone. Nothing could ever stop me getting him help, and I know that he would do exactly the same for me, because when you marry someone, you look after them, you care for them, you would do anything to keep them safe. You don't marry someone and expect their welfare to be taken care of by your family or your staff. 
So again, bad husband, bad employer. Well, Harry is just as guilty of bullying his staff as Meghan. Everyone always throws everything at Meghan and I do think that she is a vicious mean girl. We have seen continuous behaviour from Meghan. We've read about it in Valentine Lowe's book, Tom Bauer's book. We've had people that have worked with her from Suits, from Reitman's, lots of people that have experienced Meghan's true nature and they have said that she's not particularly nice, but she's not done all of this by herself. Harry was also responsible and had a better duty of care towards his staff because they were the ones that had looked after him most of his life. They were the ones that were part of his life long before Meghan ever came on the scene. So it's funny how not much like his friends, as soon as Meghan started saying they're awful, that Harry went along with it. Where Harry was also very toxic towards his staff is when on a TV interview and obviously written in spare, he talks about the fact that his staff was so broken by criticism by he and Meghan that they were slumped over the desk crying. This is not normal behaviour. No one in a work environment should ever end up like that. Yet Harry said it was such contempt in his voice. How dare they burst into tears and be emotionally upset as me and my wife criticise them. And I thought, you vicious, nasty little man. Let's go on to bad sportsmen. Harry is well and truly a very skilled polo player. I'm sure of it. He must be because he plays for Santa Barbara Polo Club. He hasn't got a great track record of controlling his temper, being nice to staff, and also treating his horses with the respect that they deserve. Bad carbon footprints. Well, this one just speaks for itself, doesn't it? Harry started up Travelers because he wanted to create a company, one to line his pockets, but two for all of these agencies to work with around the world travel companies so people could learn to have sustainable travel, probably pay 10 times as much, but go to these places where they're environmentally and eco-friendly. There's nothing wrong with that, but when you jet set your entire life, your wife, every time you so much as go state to state in America, you use private jets and SUVs plus several of them for their security teams as well and staff um, like Uber. So sorry that is another one. He can walk barefoot on the beach and give as many speeches as he likes at the next Google summit but much like all of the other multi-millionaires that go there they are absolute hypocrites. There are lots of things that we can say that Harry has been bad at. For example duty, loyalty, service. <laughs> How many years are his defenders going to use his two very brief terms in Afghanistan, his brief 10 years where he was by his own accounts, his own words in spare, treated differently to the rest of the officers and other soldiers in the army. Harry's going to feed off this for the rest of his life. It's a shield. Harry was in the army so that deflects all of his bad behaviour. No, sorry, it doesn't. Harry hasn't been able to produce a single podcast. You know, he hasn't produced anything for Netflix. Sure, he might sign his name to stuff that other people work on, but I guess that doesn't actually make him good at anything apart from signing his name. In fact, there's only one thing that Harry has been consistently good at, and that is complaining and moaning, whinging and whining, all about the fact that he was born a prince. Boo-hoo. Now, I'm not going to lie here. Harry has been part of many amazing things. He has used his platform over the years for good things. Whether this was pushed by the, the royal family's PR, but I do think that genuinely Harry did have a love of South Africa, Centre Bali. He really did love the people in Lothoso, but Harry is so far detached from the Harry that we've got now. I don't think even he remembers even the wonderful things to do with the Invictus Games, which is absolutely fantastic for all of the veterans, all of the, the love and the community. Again, Harry was very much invested in that. And now the only things he seems invested in when it comes to the Invictus Games is working out how he can monetize it. Now, the thing is, I don't hate Harry. I actually just feel incredibly sad at the person that he's become. I don't think that he's a particularly nice person anymore. But as for Harry, I was a fan of Harry. Harry was a couple of years younger than me. I think I'm like eight months younger than Prince William. And it's just, I grew up with him. So when Harry was getting in trouble for everything, I'll be honest with you, apart from one or two obvious things to do with you know, the racism and the Nazi costume, 
I wasn't seeing anything different that he was doing. He was just a teenager like us, you know, getting into trouble and stuff. And he had his life playing out on a worldwide platform. So I saw him as normal, actually, down to earth, a, a royal rogue, as it were. But the Harry that we have now is clearly not the same as the old Harry. And I'm not even sure if the old Harry was the real Harry. Much like when uh, a man has an affair, the other woman tends to, still in this day and age, she'll get the majority of the blame and at the end of the day it's the husband the one that's cheated I think it's very similar to Harry and Meghan Meghan has taken a lot of the blame and I hold my hands up in the beginning I was very guilty of this I do feel that it is a narcissistic relationship I do believe that she's manipulated him she's nurtured every negative trait that Harry has got you've watched him change physically mentally the sparkle behind his eyes I do believe that she is definitely controlling I believe that she is absolutely a narcissist However, there are some things that Harry has done throughout his life, like I've said, this was before Meghan. This was before Meghan had her claws into him. These are decisions that Harry has made. Yes, some of the ones later on, he'd been with Meghan for some time. But Harry has reportedly been treating people very badly for a very, very long time, even before he met Meghan. It's as if those two just brought out the worst side to each other. And that's the other thing. People say, why do you talk about Harry and Meghan? Why do people still report on them? because they are fascinating to people, because no one has ever seen this play out on a worldwide stage. No two people have been given so much privilege, money and love, the outpouring of love that they had from everyone all around the world when Harry met Meghan. And they have squandered it at such an alarming rate and in some of the worst ways. It's fascinating to people, the same as a junk magazine when you're in the supermarket is. It's the same reason when you're caught on the motorway and you realise there's been a traffic accident. You don't want to look, but you, you can't help. You know, people rubberneck. And I think that's the thing with Harry and Meghan. People are rubbernecking and watching their, their demise, their fall from grace. It's become, as I said, they're a punchline. They're entertainment for people now. So it should come as no great surprise that none of these big companies want to sign up with them anymore. What can they represent? Good work ethics? Nope. Family values? Nope. Dedication to charitable causes? Nope. <laughs> I mean, there's absolutely nothing that these two seem to stick at apart from complaining about their lot in life. Now, as for the people that think Meghan is solely responsible, I think that they're going to have a shock when they do separate and a divorce is announced. I don't think that they're going to have suddenly Harry come to his senses because I'm not altogether too sure that the boy had any senses from day one. It's very clear that Meghan is not a nice person. You can tell a person by how they treat other people and it's quite clearly obvious that Meghan's not particularly nice and nor is Harry. And if these two do separate and part ways, Salt and Pepper look like they're no longer moving together, it will be an epic breakup divorce of a magnitude that we have not seen. It will be Amber Heard versus Amber Heard. And to be honest with you, I don't think we're ready for that. So in a weird way, I actually hope that these two, the toxic duo, stay together in holy, miserable <laughs> matrimony. Because at this point, I think they truly do deserve each other. So on that cheery, wonderful note, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the comments. So take care for now. See you soon. Bye.